G'day everyone, we're uh, back here again on Lawton Island, um, last day today, bugger. So, before everybody's waking up, I thought I'd take the opportunity to uh, tell you all about uh, one of my favourite characters from the uh, Australian Army in the First World War, uh, a bloke named Pompey Elliott. He was born on this day on the 19th of June, 1878, and uh, his story doesn't end particularly well, uh, but I think it's very poignant. Um, given the current situation with a lot of our returned uh, veterans. So listen up and we'll, we'll have a bit of fun. I'll let you know what's going on with him. Okay, so Harold Edward Pompey Elliott was born on the 19th of June, 1878. And throughout his life, he was a lawyer and a politician, but most importantly, he was an Australian soldier in World War I. He was educated at Ballarat College and the University of Melbourne, where he joined the Officers' Corps. In 1900, he interrupted his studies to enlist in the 4th Victorian Imperial Contingent, serving in South Africa in the, in the Second South African War, or the, the Boer War. He was awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal for an audacious night exploit, and he later served with the Border Scouts and was congratulated by Lord Kitchener himself. He returned to university in 1903. He also returned to the Army in 1904 as a second lieutenant in the 5th Infantry Regiment. In 1907, he was called to the Bar of Victoria and the Commonwealth as a lawyer. By 1913, he'd become the Lieutenant Colonel, commanding the 58th Battalion in the new Universal Training Scheme. He had been married in 1909 to a young lady named Catherine Fraser Campbell, and they had a daughter and a son, and his letters home throughout the war showed a really compassionate side, as I said, how much he missed his, his beloved Katie. So that's enough, by the way, of a background. Uh, when the AIF was being raised in 1914, Elliot was appointed the commander of the 7th Battalion in the 2nd Brigade. He had a quick temper, but he also had boundless energy and a strength of character, and he quickly became popular among his troops. There was just something about him that appealed to the common soldier. His men called him Pompey, for reasons which I have not been able to track down, and although he didn't particularly like the name, it stuck, and he was known throughout the AIF as Pompey Elliot. At the Gallipoli landing, uh, Elliot was wounded and he was evacuated and wasn't, didn't return until early June. He was involved in the Lone Pine attack on the 8th of August and in the next 24 hours his uh, battalion repulsed the Turkish counterattacks with close quarter fighting and bombing. Of the seven Victoria Crosses awarded at Lone Pine, four went to Elliot's men. But his own work was not recognised and this is something that would dog him for the rest of the war. He was the sort of bloke who would question his superiors um, and no doubt this had some impact when it came time to hand out honours and mentions and that kind of thing. He was evacuated sick in August and returned in November but then on the eve of the evacuation he sprained his ankle which is a hardcore military type injury if ever there was one and he was evacuated before the remainder of his troops. In February 1916 Pompey was made the commander of the 1st Brigade uh, but on the 1st of March, he was given the task of organising the 15th Brigade in the newly formed 5th Division, and he was promoted to Brigadier General. In July uh, 1916, Elliot began his career on the Western Front when the 5th Division was sent into battle at Fromel. I won't go too deeply into this battle, um, as I'll probably cover it in another episode, but for the purposes of this episode, uh, just, just know that Fromel was a disaster. Pompey fought against the plans, but uh, he was basically ignored, and his brigade went forward with the rest of the division. Over the next 24 hours, his brigade suffered 1,452 casualties out of over more than 5,000 for the entire division. This is even more tragic when you realise that this wasn't even a proper battle. It was just a diversion designed to draw German troops away from the main British effort further south on the Somme. It also failed in this task, as not a single German soldier was diverted. Pompey was in the front line at zero hour and he was there to greet the battered survivors upon their return the next day. Arthur Baisley, the assistant to Charles Bean, stated that uh, no one who was present will ever forget the picture of him, the tears streaming down his face as he shook hands with the returning survivors. This is one of the aspects of his character which endeared him to Australian troops. He was always at the front, suffering many of the discomforts of his men and he always looked a bit rough around the edges. There's a bit of a saying in the army that there's two types of soldiers. There's a ceremonial and there's the field soldier. Pompey Elliott was a field soldier. Most importantly, he cared about his troops and he, although he never backed away from a hard fight, he did his best to avoid unnecessarily risking the lives of his men. 
I could go on and list his various achievements as a commander throughout the war, but this would make for a very, very long video. Suffice to say, he annoyed his superiors no end to his own detriment, but it was said that he could do things with Australian troops that no other commander could. He knew this, but he was humble about it. And despite never receiving recognition for his own superiors, or maybe because of it, he always gave credit to his subordinates. After the Battle of Polygon Wood, he wrote to his wife, It was all due to the boys and the officers. It is wonderful the loyalty and bravery that is shown. Their absolute confidence in me is touching. I can order them to take on the most hopeless looking jobs and they throw their hearts and souls, not to speak of their lives and bodies, into the job without thought. You must pray more than ever that I shall be worthy of this trust, Katie, and have wisdom and courage given me worthy of my job. That's pretty cool. After the war, Elliot spoke to his brigade for the last time in January of 1919. And after all the formalities and the official parade was over, his troops did a voluntary march past his headquarters, giving him another cheer. And so he came out and he gave them another cheer as well. And throughout the war, he had been awarded the Distinguished Service Order, the Russian Order of St. Anne, and the French Croix de Guerre. He was mentioned in dispatches seven times and in a special order of the day by the commander of the French 31st Corps. After the war, Pompey tried to get redress for what he viewed as his supersession for not being given a divisional command, and he spent many years urging for an inquiry. He eventually went into politics as a senator for the Victorian Nationalist Party. His sense of injustice combined with the strain of his war service and his ceaseless activity began to undermine his health. In early 1931, he was in hospital for treatment for high blood pressure. When discharged, he did not return to the Senate. Soon afterwards, he was found with a wound in the arm and he was rushed to hospital where he died on the 23rd of March, 1931. An inquest returned a verdict of suicide and he was buried with full military honours in Birdwood Cemetery. A tragic end for a great man, a great soldier and a great Australian. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you want to be advised when uh, new episodes are posted, just click on the subscribe button that's down there somewhere. Uh, if you want to find out what I'm up to, go to my website at warwickoneal.com. Uh, if you want to check out my blog site, it's uh, notyouraverageidiot.net, where I blog on all sorts of things from four-wheel driving, single parenting, whatever comes into my head. So I hope to hear from you soon, and uh, cheers. See ya.